A society that protects women is a society that develops. American society is a classic, typical example. And uh, historically, society that protects women are, are, is a society that works. Samira Baumia is known in Ghana as the, um, the wife of the vice president. But Samira burst into political life in 2016 as a, an avid campaigner for her husband's party, the New Patriotic Party. It's not that surprising in terms of the way she articulates her matters. She's very, very articulate. Everybody knows that. You can't talk about Samira without talking about she being articulate. Uh, it's okay to add that she's pretty and all that, yes, but, but that's, that's, that's okay. The real point is that she is as intelligent as any political male and is also very, very articulate. She comes from a political family, however, so that's not too surprising. Her father is um, uh, Dr. Ramadan, who is Ghana's ambassador in UAE. Her brother is at uh, NADMO, and her Abda brother is a member of parliament for Adenta from the NDC. Uh, so she's quite political from a political family. In 2016, she burst out uh, onto the political scene. Those of us who didn't know much about her politics uh, were quite impressed to see her. I'm going to remind you of something she did in 2016. And then I'll come to something she said in 2020. And I'll come to the narrative about when women take up political positions or when they begin to talk about politics. This reverse narrative that always comes. I, I think we have to talk about that. And I'm taking the, uh, 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 the, the start to begin this conversation as we go into election 2024. There are a lot of women that are going to run. There's Anna Bissu in NDC, Samira Balnia in MPP, uh, there's Esla Usu in MPP, there's uh, other women in NDC, and there's Zaneta Rollins in NDC. We're going to see a lot of women on the campaign. So it's going to be a very feisty campaign. Our purpose here today is that let's keep the campaign in terms of bullet for bullet, punch for punch, on the matter that they are talking about. You can throw jabs and everything, but this uh, vitriol and derogatory things that are said of women when they talk in politics, that has nothing to do with what they've said, what they are advocating, what they are against, what philosophy they are churning out. The, 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 the derogatory, derogatory remarks have absolutely nothing to do with those things. They just talk about their person, their sexuality and all that. I think that is, well, I think it's wrong. I don't know what you think, viewers. Should we say something about it? I mean, because a man, I'm, if I'm a man, I decide to go and run for MP, you know, nobody's going to call me, oh, look at Paul, he's an Ashao. Nobody's going to say that. And then look at Paul, he likes women. Nobody's going, even if you say that, nothing happens. But as soon as a woman comes up, these are the sexually connoted derogatory remarks they make about women. I think that must stop. Let's look at Samira Baumia in 2016. Have a look. NDC for the Sika Koyabas branded. On what the millions, 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 millions on the tour. So, Ghana for soon. Yes, a more boy a chrono, more boy a bro. Munchai Samun to contract and sign. And almost say, Musu cry a bear no more. No more, no more, say. Sesa Ucha, when you show baby a NDC flag, President Mama poster, NDC or more branding gun, and you know, the Yasika, you know, by a branding. In the the youth of this country, we are saying to the NDC that we see you all right. You want us to see you? We see you, but we see incompetence. We see you, but we see corruption. We see you, but we see mismanagement. We see you, but we see bad governance. We see you, but we want change. We see you, but we want Ghana to move forward. That was something. That was something. I wasn't at that rally, but I think it was a Sunday. My phone was, didn't stop ringing. And they were asking me, Charlie, you hear Samira about me? I said, no, I didn't listen. I'm now catching up with the story of a trade fair. I said, but don't come here, trade fair, with the traffic there. I said, what happened? They said, Samira Baumia. I said, what did she say? They said, hey, no, they really couldn't, nobody could tell me what she said. Everybody, hey, ah, hey, hey, they said, hey. That was something. That was something. I have not seen enough covered politics since 1990, 96 in this country. 
and I've covered many elections, many congresses, I've not seen a woman stand on the platform, a young woman, to charge the crowd. That crowd there was easily 10,000 people. To charge the crowd in that manner, I thought this was something. And if she's speaking against your party, naturally you'll be worried. If I'm against her, and this is her level of articulation and communication, I will be worried. So naturally the NDC were worried. But that's Samira Baumia. That's, that's the power that she brings to the campaign. And her opponents are unhappy about it. I can understand that. But the point you are making tonight is whether you are her opponent or you are in her party, if Samira or any other woman talks like that and you want to respond, you have to respond and say, what did the woman say? What she said is not true. What she said is wrong. What she said, but these days in Ghana, especially now, as soon as a woman says something, they say, I, I don't understand. I mean, it didn't used to be there. Nana Kuredu Ajima Rollins has been rotting campaigns for the NDC since 1992. We didn't hear that. That narrative wasn't part of our discourse. Somehow, since the year 2005, our whole political discourse has gone down into the abyss where philosophy and intellect has given way to all kinds of things. Everybody is insulting. And now we have people who hold television and radio programs just to publish insults for two and a half hours. It may be funny so people watch, but we don't want our children to emulate that and become like that. For those of you who are listening, the people that you watch who insult somebody for two and a half hours? Is that what you want your son, your daughter to be doing? We want our children to campaign the way Samira was campaigning. You heard what she said. She didn't insult anybody. She said, well, we, we see you. We see that, but we see corruption. We see that. And the line, the rhyme, the way she picked it up. Now, let's look at Samira Baumia again in 2020. This is Samira Baumia again, talking in 2020. Have a look. Excellency, former president, Mr. President, Madam First Lady, all other protocol observe. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. These past few days have been interesting. Interesting. Whilst our leader is putting out his policies, his vision for the youth and people of this country, another leader is putting out doctored tapes and fabricated lies about our leader. And that is the choice that we are faced with on Monday. That is the choice the good people of Ghana are faced with on Monday. But I have good news for you. The good people of Ghana have already rejected the propagandist, ethnocentric, lying NDC. And inshallah, December 7th, we are going to reject them massively again. Kukudu. Kukudu. Ghana has moved on. Ghana is moving on. Ghana is on the move with Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. Ghana is on the move with a visionary leader. A leader who has a plan. A cohesive plan for farmers, for students, for entrepreneurs, for doctors, for nurses, for everybody in this country. And that is why from Hohoi to Riosu, from Bolgatanga to Axim, from Jamestown to Tamale, Mr. President, they are saying Akpenao, Akpekakakamaunayirao, they are saying Yadawase, Nyankopono Nshro, they are saying they are saying Pusiapa, Mr. President. We are grateful. And personally, Mr. President, I am grateful that you've been resolute. You've been firm in your conviction that you have selected the Vice President, Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, four times in a row, unprecedented. Thank you so much. That has given me an opportunity.
opportunity. A young Muslim woman with a proud Fulani heritage. The opportunity to serve my people and to be of service to thousands of women and children and men across this country. I know this wouldn't have been possible without the grace of Allah and the sacrifices my parents made to give me an education. And so I know the value of an education. And so Mr. President, for all the lives you have changed, for all the destinies you have changed, for all the dreams you have made come true, we are saying thank you. God bless you. And inshallah, on Monday, we will give you a resounding four more years to do more for our great country. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, I, I like the rapturous applause from Akufuado. I like that. I like the rapturous applause. I mean, but Samira says something that that's interesting. Education. If it is true, we just had miracles. If it is true that Akufuado's education policy has educated 800,000 Ghanaians who could not, uh, 100,000 Ghanaians who could not afford education per year for the eight years, and it has given 1.2 million people education in secondary schools, including people who were ordinarily not qualified to go to Wesley Girls, Achimota, Presec, Adisadel, and they have now, because of free SHS, gotten admission there. If that data is true, God will bless Nana Kufado and his government. No question about it. If he had taken the taxpayers' money, he could have used it to do anything. Build road, do that, do this, do that. Could have used it to do anything. President Mahama had access to it. President Mills had access to it. President Kufo had access to it. If it's true, that is Nana term. He had spent the taxpayers' money each year to educate over 100,000 Ghanaians who could not have afforded education. They, they just were going to go away after GSS. If he has used Ghanaian's taxpayers' money, you and I are money, because he decides what to do with the money, because he's president. If he has used some of that money to educate each year 120,000 people, so that at the end of the eight years, when we are talking next year, Akufado's policy would have educated 1.2 million people and given them literary and, uh, and numeracy skills at SS level. Then God will bless him. Let's come back to the Samaria story. So that's Samaria Baumia you saw right there. That's Samaria Baumia. So this is a story about women and how some women can make an impact in their husband's uh, uh, career of politics. We have seen it happen all over the place. We have seen Anakunidu Ajiman Rawlings do it. Now, uh, if, you, if you look here, you will see this story is Ajiman Rawlings, why she fought for succession rights for women. And uh, Mrs. Rawlings did, did so much in the political career of Light Lieutenant Rawlings. And some of it, a, a bit of it, is when she wrote this book, said this is going to come in three volumes. This is the first one that talks about her upbringing up to the time, before the time politics started, up to her marriage with Fly Lieutenant Rawlings. And Mrs. Rawlings went around the whole country, even dealing with population. I don't know whether those of you who are my age have noticed. When we were growing up, all the television adverts had a person with two children, one boy, one girl whether it's a milk advert, Milo advert, sugar advert, they always advertise two children. Apparently, it was a design where Mrs. Rawlings was trying to sell the idea of population control to Ghanaians, and it worked. It so worked that people grew up thinking that the maximum number of children to have is two. That has affected people in the rural communities, and the population has been maintained and controlled so that our taxes can do it. That was her brainchild. But she did all that with the freedom that she, she got, and people didn't call her all kinds of names. But today, if Mrs. Rollins comes up to campaign, people may call her kinds of names. And that's the, that's the point that we are trying to make tonight. Fly Lieutenant Rollins had occasion to speak about Nana Kunidu Ajiman Rollins. And, um, and this is what he said. Have a look at this video where J.J. Rollins is talking about his wife. J.J. is one of the longest rulers of Ghana. And he did wrong, he did right, he did good, he did bad. All that is part of history. But the unmistakable uh, 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 feature of J.J.'s leadership was Nana Kunidu Ajiman Rawlings' wife. And we're going to talk about the examples of other women who have done so. Let's hear JJ Do in what he said, the testimony he gave about his wife. She was special. Even as a young, young girl. And she's still special. She was special. And is still special. And uh, for me, it had to be her, you know. It was a privilege for me to be acquainted with her. 
I remember telling her that I don't deserve her. <laughs> but at the same time, nobody deserves her better than me. <laughs> 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 no, no.